Hey everyone, how's it going? In 2019, I decided to try and beat Red and Blue with just a Magikarp. Without exaggeration, that video changed my life. It turned me from a part-time YouTuber who did this as a hobby to someone who's doing this as a career. And as much as I'm grateful for that video, there's a couple things I kind of regret. Number one, I use items. I mean, sure, it made the battles a little more interesting, but we don't use items anymore. At least, anything other than a held item in battle. And the second thing is, we couldn't win. We lost. I want to try beating an entire game without items in battle and just a Magikarp, and that's what we're going to try to do today. Is it going to be possible? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Terastalization, auto battles, power of friendship. We got a lot of tools at our disposal. Will it be enough to overcome the 18 tasks of the Paldian region? The ending of each of those quests resulting in very difficult battles. And finally, an extremely difficult battle with a Professor AI. Only one way to find out. Now, I'm sure there are people who are able to do this, but as of now, there's no way for me to modify my starter on a Switch game. I mean, I just don't know how to do that. So we're going to pick Quaxley, and we're going to have to catch a Magikarp in the wild, which is perfectly fine. When I did these challenges as a kid, I would just trade in an egg after I got the Pokedex. So this is entirely consistent with the old way I used to do the challenges, although changing the starter right at the beginning is definitely a little bit more fun. You're able to catch a Magikarp fairly quickly, but I wanted to catch Magikarp in a very specific Pokeball. I wanted a Luxury Ball, and I knew that there was one available in the area that you start off in, this tutorial area. You can't buy one yet, and in order to enter the main city, you have to battle Nimona, which you can lose, but I'd prefer to have Magikarp. Thankfully, I actually did a really cool thing I wanted to know whether I could get this item, whatever it was, by doing, I don't know, an anti-gravity slide. By pressing B, as I'm going full speed, I actually was able to get around this fence, and although I had no idea what this was, it happened to be a luxury ball. I was in a call with someone, and I didn't even know if this slide maneuver would work. All I said was, look, this would be funny. Hey, we got through. And then we got the Luxury Ball, and I wish I was recording my voice. The reaction was insane, because this is exactly what I wanted, just because I was messing around. One of the greatest gaming moments of my life. We haven't even caught the Magikarp yet, so let's go do that. There are pawns all around, and they can spawn wherever. In an open world game, it's harder to tell you exactly where to find Magikarp, but it is available in the tutorial area with a Luxury Ball, this will allow us to raise Magikarp's friendship points quicker, and this is going to be a big deal. We talked about the power of friendship. If you watched my Bidoof run, you'll know how powerful the power of friendship can be. This is an anime, I guess. Well, an anime was based on this. So we want Magikarp to like us, and this is going to help tremendously. Anyway, once we have the Magikarp, it's not as if we can actually do anything. I mean, we can lose to Nimona to enter Meza Goza, but there's a problem. There's a mandatory battle against a couple Team Star members, and that battle you actually need to win. And right now, we only have Splash, which isn't going to let us win. Magikarp learns Tackle at level 15, and usually leveling up Magikarp is the worst. Thankfully, Scarlet and Violet have a couple things that will help us. The first has been around since Generation 6. If you catch a Pokemon in Generation 6, 7, 8, and 9, you gain experience points as if you defeated the Pokemon. Additionally, from Generation 5, skipping 6, and then 7 and beyond, the experience points you get are relative to the level difference. So if you catch a Flamigo, which gives pretty high base experience with a level 5 Magikarp, you level up quite a bit. So what we're actually going to do is catch a bunch of Flamigo, and once Magikarp is strong enough, well then, Auto Battle. Auto Battle gives you just a fraction of the experience points that catching or defeating the Pokemon does, but because it's so much faster, it's typically worth it. You can usually Auto Battle five or six Pokemon in the time it takes to catch or defeat just a single Flamigo or something like that. 
Now this is tedious, and it takes a very, very long time. Well, relatively speaking, it's not that bad, but after 35 minutes, I was able to find a rare candy as well, get to level 15, and now that I'm at level 15, the Team Star members aren't actually that big a problem anymore. And after you go through all of them and are introduced to the three major quest lines, finally, our journey can begin in earnest. And as soon as our journey begins, we're going to be doing a couple things to make it a heck of a lot easier. First thing we're going to do is go on a picnic. Why? Well, this takes the place of petting the Pokemon or camping, and it's the only way to increase friendship to its maximum level. Now, unfortunately, the game is still new enough that Bulbapedia doesn't have accurate pages on this stuff, so I had to rely on Cerebi, which is still good, but sometimes in its quest to be the first to document this stuff, there are minor mistakes here and there as new mechanics and new interactions are discovered. Still, I'm fairly certain it is right about friendship here. At 255, the maximum friendship, Magikarp will do a bunch of really cool things. There are three that are relevant to us. There is a 20% chance that Magikarp will survive an attack on 1 HP if it would knock it out. Kind of like Focus Band, but double. This is huge for a Pokemon that is going to be using Flail, which I'll talk about in just a second. The second thing is that there is a 10% chance, or an additional 10% chance, that a move will miss. So Tackle, which is 100 accuracy in this game, would have 90, Stone Edge would have 70, etc. That's my understanding of how that works. Finally, our critical hit rate goes from 1 in 24 to 2 in 24, or 1 in 12. It doubles. Also, I guess there's a fourth thing. When we have a status ailment, there is a significant chance Magikarp will heal itself. So these four things are going to be very useful. And frankly, if this run ends up being possible, it's only because of friendship, which is really cool and there's a way to check it. So I made sure my Magikarp was at maximum friendship before I tried anything. Now let's talk about Flail for a second. You learn it at level 25 and here's a chart. What this chart means is that the lower Magikarp's HP is, the higher the base power is of Flail. Anytime I do a Magikarp run, post-generation one of course, I have an Excel spreadsheet to tell me exactly how much damage I'm gonna do with my Flails. And considering that Magikarp, oh yeah, I probably should have brought this up, it can't learn any other moves. None via Egg Move, none via TM, which it actually could learn in some earlier generations, if you can believe it, nothing. Just like Generation 3, Tackle, Flail, Splash. Although, you can actually delete moves anytime in this game, which is really cool. Now, we're almost ready to get into the run itself, but there's one more thing I did before I battled anyone. That's level up to get Flail. How did I do that? Terror Raids. Not Terror Raids, because they don't give me terror. They give me, well, joy. They're great. So they work very similar to how they did in Generation 8, but for our purposes, they rank between 1 and 4 stars, at least before the post game. Before you have any badges, the only raids you'll see are mostly 1 star raids, but 30% chance you'll see 2 star raids. While these are meant to be completed with other people, you can just battle these alone and the AI will send trainers to help you, which is perfectly fine. After you've defeated the Pokemon, you have the choice to catch it, which I believe is 100%, or to run away. Regardless, you get some rewards. The ones we care about are candies. The one-star raids only give you small and mostly extra small, but as you beat more gym leaders and unlock higher raids, you will get medium and large candies, and these are far more efficient at leveling up Magikarp than slowly battling trainers in the overworld, or worse yet, auto-battling. So I did a ton of these, and this is the main way I leveled up Magikarp. I've been doing this run for almost four hours, and finally, we're gonna get to the first gym. We go to Cortondo and battle the Bug-type gym leader, Katie. Now, the way I approach this battle, her first Pokemon is Nimble, is I'm gonna go for Tackle. You can see the first one does about a quarter, and as my HP gets lower and lower, eventually, it will make sense to use Flail. Now, 
in this game since tackle is 40 base power it doesn't make sense to use flail until we're at just over a third hp 35.42 if you remember the chart you'll also notice i got a critical hit which allowed me to knock out the nimble a turn early which is good but we actually do want the nimble and the tarantula to damage us or the tarantula sorry because we do want to use flail and hopefully one shot so we're gonna keep going for tackle once we're at 19 HP, we're close, but not quite there yet. And after that bug bite, we use Tackle, Knockout Tarantula. Until we're at 16 HP or lower, Flail is still doing the same as Tackle. It doesn't do all that much to Teddy Ursa, but after Fury Cutter, we're in base 100 power range. Unfortunately, if it did just a little bit more, literally just 2 HP more, it would be base 150, and that might matter. I go for Flail, and yeah, that definitely mattered. I do have the Silk Scarf equipped, which gives me a 20% boost. Not nearly enough. Teddy Ursa knocks me out, and my very first attempt versus a gym leader, with my strongest move, 10 levels higher, ends in defeat. Well, I decide to do a couple more things in the overworld, and then I'm going to battle Katie again, and I think you'll agree this battle is probably going to go a lot better. We're three levels higher, and yet, watch what happens when I go for Tackle. That does quite a bit more, more than you might expect. That's because I didn't just level up, I also EV trained my attack. You can buy the power items, and although you can't EV train via auto battle, you can just knock out weak Pokemon, and with that, you can get a lot more attack, such that Nimble without a critical hit is a 3 a KO. We're still not in range to use a powerful flail, so we go for Tackle versus the Tarantula. 21, still not enough for flail. We go for Tackle, and it's probably going to be a 3 a KO. However, at 14 HP, finally, we are at 80 base power flail. We go for it and knock out the Tarantula. Now, so long as the Teddy Ursa doesn't one-shot me, we will almost certainly knock it out. Not with this attack. That won't be enough. But the next one definitely will at 200 base power or 150. So we do about just under half. I'd say about 60%. And the moment of truth, it's Terastalized Fury Cutter. It's 20 base power. We survive. And we can knock out the Teddy Ursa with a max-powered flail. Actually, I don't know if that was max-powered. It could be 150. Doesn't matter. We win. Only seven more of these to go, plus five Team Star, plus the Titans. We got a lot to do, but we're off to a good start. One win and two tries with the Magic Arp, we'll take it. Now, one of the things that made this run difficult is that the events, or whatever you want to call them that are easiest, the next gym is Grass. The worst Titan is Rock. It was hard to decide what to do next, so I chose battling the Titan Bombardier. Now, or Bombardier, I actually have no idea. Now, thankfully, because we're so high leveled, we're doing quite a lot. We're level 32, which is definitely very high for where we are at this point in the game. Now, I am able to get past the first phase. All the Titans have two phases. And the only reason I was able to is because at 1 HP, I got that 20% chance that Magikarp would tough it out. Just because it loves me that much. Go, Carpe Diem. Seize the battle. However, in the Bombardier fight, unlike other Titans, I didn't have an opportunity to open my pause menu and heal. So I had to start the second phase at 1 HP which, while good for Flail, is bad for not fainting. That said, despite the fact I was at 1 HP, Bombardier was unable to knock out Magikarp, and I was able to use Max Powered Flail after Max Powered Flail, and we have defeated our first Titan. Defeating Bombardier allows us to swim, which gives us access to pretty much the entire world, there's only a couple places that are hard to access because we don't have the ability to climb yet. But by and large, this was very successful. And that's two events or whatever you want to call them down. Now, I was tired moving as slow as you can. So I decided to battle Cloth. 
Thankfully, even though Cloth resists us, but because we're so overleveled, we did a lot more damage than I thought, and we were easily able to get past the first stage of Cloth. As for the second stage, I could have healed, but I thought, eh, having less health is good, because we'll get a better flail quicker, and that'll deal more damage, and that's useful. Well, while that did work to a degree, Cloth was able to use a couple vice grips after his anger shell, and he knocked out my Carpe Diem. So we lose, right? Well, Shelter went for Water Gun, and that knocked out Cloth, and the game celebrates as if we won. So, looks like in these Titan battles, so long as both Pokemon don't get knocked out, we're actually able to lose and still win. And there's nothing wrong with this. We're forced to battle with Arvin. I don't see anything wrong. The game counts it as a victory. There's no glitch or anything like that. We're going to have to wash Magikarp to get its friendship back to maximum. But otherwise, yeah, that's great. All right, the next thing I wanted to do is defeat the second easiest gym leader, Brassius. Unfortunately, he is a grass-type gym leader, which is not great for Carpe Diem. But, I mean, what can you do? We are double the level of Petlil, and Tackle does do half damage. Unfortunately, the Petlil is able to put me to sleep, and it takes me a while to wake up. All the while, Petlil is able to use Mega Drain and gain back a lot of its HP, which is probably going to turn this into a 3 or 4 hit KO. Well, we can actually switch to Flail, so it's going to be a 3 hit KO, but is 13 HP enough to defeat Smoliv? And then the pseudo Wudo? No, it's probably not. Small of maybe. We're gonna go for Flail, and we do one shot. But pseudo Wudo has the sturdy ability, and that's going to be a bit of a problem, because even if we get a crit and would one shot, pseudo Wudo will survive on one HP and get a turn to attack us. So if we don't get a clutch miss, or our survive on one HP due to friendship we're going to lose this battle. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. I battled Brassius three or four times, but unfortunately, I was never able to get a clutch live on one HP, which would have been able to knock out Pseudo Wudo. It's frustrating because resets in this game take far longer than in earlier games, so it's best if something doesn't take like 100 attempts. Truth is though, I could probably make this a 1 in 5 chance of winning if I got my HP to 1. Because that way, I wouldn't have to worry about the pet lil putting me to sleep and me being asleep too long. And then not having enough HP to survive Trailblaze. And also potentially not doing enough damage to 2-shot Pseudo Wudo. In case you're wondering, Pseudo Wudo terastalizes to grass, so it's defensively a grass type. But what I decide to do is start at 1 HP. Sure, we would need a clutch 1 in 5 chance that we survive on 1 HP due to friendship, but it will make the Smoliv and the Petlil completely trivial. There was one issue with this that I didn't foresee. One thing that might end up being a big problem a little later. It auto-heals you when you challenge a gym leader. I don't know if this happens before Team Star Battles. I know it doesn't happen before Titans. But it seems like before gym leaders, you have to heal. Now, the worst part was that Sleep Powder has a 1 in 4 chance of missing, and yet I don't think the Pet Lil missed a single time. Additionally, now that we have a lot more HP since we did level up, Small is going to take 2 hits. But it might now be possible at level 38 that we can tackle Pseudo Wudo. It's going to put us in range for a powerful flail, and we'll knock it out then. But I'm not sure. These terastalization cutscenes take forever. Tackle barely does anything, and Trailblaze gets me to 9 HP, which probably isn't low enough. And yeah, I use Flail. Close, not close enough, and once again, we can't get that clutch 1 in 5 chance. Oh, this is getting really frustrating. I decide to level up a little bit more. How much is a little bit? I don't know, level 41? <laughs> we now one-shot Petlil with a critical hit, like we said, 1 in 12 chance. Smoliv's Razor Leaf barely does anything to me, 
And we actually get a second critical hit. Now we face the Trudo Wudo, since it is grass type. By the way, the game makes that joke. I'm not that clever. And we even get that miss we wanted. <laughs> God. And this is going to be very easy. We get a second miss. Oh my God. Well, finally, after nearly knocking it out with Tackle, Trailblaze hits and barely does anything. We just missed knocking it out, but with 17 HP to go, I go for Flail, and I guess it almost tripled the level of the Pseudo Wudo. This was an expected result, but consider the next Gym Leader is an Electric type Gym Leader, which is not a great matchup for me. And the Team Star Starmobiles are pretty difficult, so I probably need to be around this level anyway. It's just very sad we need to be all the way at level 41 to defeat the second Gym Leader. Well, I'm going to battle another Gym Leader next, the Electric-type Gym Leader, Iono. Now, it's important to defeat her because once you defeated three Gym Leaders, you get access to three-star raids, which give you way more experience points via candies. Now, we're almost double the level of the Watrill. I was told that's how you pronounce it. And as long as we don't get paralyzed, Spark isn't that big a deal. We can actually knock out the Watrill in two hits, which is pretty good. Next comes out the Bella Bolt, But unfortunately, I didn't realize Bella Bolt's ability, when you use a physical attack against it, it doubles its next electric attack. Kind of a niche ability, but super good against Magikarp. And unfortunately, Tackle Flail was not enough to knock it out. And we lost. Unsurprisingly. Now, while I can't lower my HP before I enter battle, I can just lower my EVs because the berries are just everywhere. Which I do to try to get myself within max flail range after the belly bolt. If we can do that, I'm pretty sure we can sweep through the rest of Iono's team. The question is, will the belly bolt cooperate? So, we go for Tackle, the Belly Bolt charges with power, and... Oh goodness, it actually would have knocked me out, but the power of Friendship and Max Powered Flail, I think this is enough. We knock out the Belly Bolt, Luxio does have Intimidate, but we're almost double its level. With a 200 base power move, we knock out the Luxio, and uh-oh, a Ghost-type Pokemon. What are we going to do? Don't worry, it terastalizes into an electric type. And while Miss Magus has decent stats, its defense is one of them. What? What? Wasn't that? What? Okay, I actually did damage calculations. That was supposed to one shot. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> well, uh, that wasn't actually how that was supposed to go. So, two mistakes. One, I lowered my HP too much, so the Bella Bolt almost knocked me out. And I must have made a mistake in my damage calculations because Miss Magus was supposed to be an auto one at KO. Apparently, I did something wrong. For the record, I believe all the Gym Leaders Pokemon have 20 IVs in all their stats. And I think that maybe the final ones have 252 EVs, although I don't know if this one does. Anyway, maybe that's what I did wrong. The information is still kind of spotty, but regardless, friendship helps me out, and that is three gym badges, two titans, five out of 18 events. Not terrible, honestly. I spent another hour messing around in the overworld, and it's not just training. These games are still relatively new to me, and I still find it fun to catch Pokemon in terror raids, see what items are lying about, see where the TMs are, even though Magikarp can't use any of them. Anyway, Mila. She's half my level, and she has Fire-type Pokemon. So I'm going to use Tackle versus Torkoal, and Clear Smog. That does quite a lot, actually. Like, a lot, a lot. Like, there's a chance we don't knock out the Torkoal. We thankfully do, but with just 10 HP remaining, what are we going to do versus the Starmobile? It outspeeds us. What? What? Okay, so we could have battled Giacomo, or Giacomo, as I referred to him in my Fuecoco video. I, I cannot believe we lost. 
All right, well, let's try battling another gym leader, Kofu. He's a water type gym leader. We're water type. Maybe this will go okay. So you might think I misclicked. I just went for flail? What sense does that make? Well, you might not be able to notice because we're only using a 20 base power attack. But I have a new trick up my sleeve. Something that should make Kofu very easy. And that is I'm no longer using the Silk Scarf to boost my normal attacks. I'm using the Metronome. So the way the Metronome works is that every time you use an attack, uh-oh, Wugtrio's GUI is a bit of a problem. Actually, we might lose here. So I would anticipate this. I might not be fast enough. No, but I would have won. Okay, so as I lose here, let me explain. The way Metronome works is that every time you use the attack, the next turn, it's 20% more powerful, up to 100% more. In other words, it'll double the attack. So that would take a max powered flail on your sixth usage from 200 base power to 400 base power. In most situations, Metronome is kind of gimmicky and useless. But when we're just really using one move, instead of using Tackle, which does next to nothing, we'll sacrifice a little bit of base power early to get some truly devastating attacks. Even if we're 100 base power, that's 200. 150, that's 300. We obviously are going to use five or six attacks per battle. And this is something I really like about Scarlet and Violet. Pretty much all the items are available very early on. And while Magikarp can't take advantage of many of the items because it doesn't really use many moves, even still, we found a novel strategy that you might not have thought of before. Well, I battle Kofu again, and this time I've raised my speed EVs enough that I should outspeed Wugtrio even after the first GUI. Actually, with 16 HP remaining, there might not be a second GUI, and there isn't. So now the only one left is Crabominable, which is going to terastalize into water type. Unfortunately, even with all the flails we've used, we need a higher base power to knock out Crabominable, likely 150 base power. If only we could start with slightly less HP, we would be able to manipulate our HP by starting with, let's say, 10 or so less, and we would likely win. But since the game doesn't let us do that, we kind of have to brute force the result we want, by battling a bunch of times, relying on damage ranges, misses, surviving on 1 HP. It's not as fun, and I'm not sure why they had to heal you before gym battles. You don't even have an option to turn that off. I don't think I would actually really care, other than this specific run. But in this one case, it is definitely really annoying. But after losing like 10 more times, I got to thinking. Maybe there was another move I could use that would help me. A move you would never think would actually be a positive move to use. What could it be? Tackle? I mean, what's that going to do? What if the move is Splash? That's right. I'm going to use Splash right here. And hopefully, Veluza actually hits me with Slash. It does. 17 HP. I'm going to use Splash a second time. And Veluza goes for Slash again. 54 HP. I'm going to use Splash a third time. And now I'm at 26 HP after a crit. That's not ideal, but what can you do? I mean, theoretically, 8 HP isn't bad. Unfortunately, we will have used Flail one fewer times because of that critical hit. I was hoping to be at like 1 or 2 HP, but we'll see how it goes. Wug Trio is up next. We're going to go for Flail, and we're going to knock it out. And is this going to be powerful enough to knock out the Crabominable? I don't know, but if it is, I can say that I used Splash, although that crit kind of messed things up a little bit, to execute the perfect strategy to defeat Kofu. Come on! No, so close. But if it didn't get that crit, we'd... <laughs> okay, we won anyway. But if it didn't get that crit, I'm pretty sure we would have been around 1 or 2 HP. Don't forget, crits don't deal double damage. <laughs> Speaking of crits, it's 1.5 in this generation. I also could have raised my HP a little bit, but 
in the end of the day, that worked pretty darn well. Maybe it was two splashes, not three. Who cares? We won and Splash helped us. I am ecstatic right now. We've also completed a lot more of the game a lot easier than I thought. I mean, it hasn't been quick, but we haven't been stuck on a gym leader for like four or five hours. And if you've watched my other Magikarp videos, well, actually a couple of them haven't been released yet. There are gyms that do take that long. And that's with items. The fact we're breezing through the game, well, relatively speaking, without them, very happy. But I'm going to battle Larry, and if I can defeat him, I'll be even happier. You see, after you defeat Larry, well, actually, let's battle him first. The biggest problem with Kamala is that it uses Yawn. And from my understanding, although I didn't know if this was true at the time, I thought it would interrupt my metronome. And apparently this isn't the case. What is the case is that at my current level, Slam does over half HP. And even though I can wake up relatively early, I don't always do that. If I defeat Larry, however, I will be able to Terastalize Magikarp into the normal type. That would be massive, not necessarily defensively, although it might help, but offensively, the ability to turn Flail into a same type move and get it an additional 50%? Honestly, it could be game changing and will probably make Mila, the rest of Team Star, completely trivial. This feels like the big last barrier between me and maybe just running through the rest of the game. We're probably gonna have to level up a ton, but if we can beat Larry, I'm not really sure what could stand in our way. Why did you say that? Anyway, it's probably going to be a while before I can defeat Larry, but there are other things I can do in the meantime while I level up. Giacomo is probably going to be pretty easy. Pontiard, I mean, it's level 21. That's not too good against a level 50 or so Magikarp. Flail doesn't do very much damage, so we have to attack it a lot, but we do knock it out. And he only has one other Pokemon, the car. Anyway, the car does more damage than the Pontiard did, but all that means is that eventually, Flail's gonna do enough to knock it out. This was not a difficult battle, we never really came close to losing, and we probably should have done this earlier, but whatever. I now can battle Mila again, or Mela, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but now things should be a bit better. We can use metronome strats, which should be all right. Torkoal also isn't doing nearly as much to me. And even though we might have very low HP by the time we have to fight the car, that might just help our flail one shot. Well, let's see. We have a pretty powerful flail. It's I think 80 base power and it's going to be maxed. Well, that didn't do that much. Screech is definitely not what I want to see. It outspeeds me and goes for Blazing Torque, and we almost knock it out, but I actually think it might knock me out. Oh, it doesn't. Hey, and we will easily knock out, I don't know, the car. And by my count, that is nine of 18 total events. Four gyms, two Team Star, two Titans. That's not bad at all, guys. We're making some pretty good progress. And you know what? Let's get over the halfway mark. We have a bad matchup, but Orthworm shouldn't be too bad. I mean, it doesn't do very much damage to me, and we can max out our flail via metronome, and once we get to low enough HP, we'll actually start to do some pretty significant damage. There we are. We get to 10 HP, and at that point, we take Orthworm to the second phase of the battle. We are able to heal this time, unlike with Bombardier. And while we do have to start with the base 20 power flail, I think it's gonna be worth it, especially because there's a sandstorm and it wouldn't take long for the sandstorm to knock me out. It's not like Orthworm can do all that much to me. It might be a bit of a tedious battle and the Toad Scroll is definitely helping, but we are able to slowly but surely lower Orthworm's HP and by just going for Flail again and again and again, we have defeated our third of five Titans. 
We still have the future Dawn fan. I believe it's called Iron Treads. And we have the Tatsugiri and Dodonzo. We got Poison Fairy and Fighting Team Star. And Larry plus three more gym leaders. But I don't know. This is feeling pretty good. It's been about three hours since we lost a Larry that first time. We've battled him again, but it hasn't gone very well. Still, we've leveled up a lot, and maybe things are going to go okay this time. So, like pretty much always from now on, we're just going to use Flail. So, hopefully, here's how things will shake down. Kamala hopefully doesn't go for Yawn. Based on my understanding, Slam should have a 60% accuracy. I think it's minus 20 off whatever their base accuracy is. That's what I understood. And with 51 HP, this should knock out Kamala. It does. And I don't know if that's going to be a strong enough flail to knock out the da da dun sparse. I don't know, da dun sparse. I, I kind of wish it was like a different color. It just looks like a big dun sparse. Anyway, I get a critical hit. It's not even close to knocking it out. And dun 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 sparse goes for glare. Uh, that's not good. Like at all. We do break through. So I guess Dun 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 Sparse did nothing. We go for Flail. It doesn't knock it out. And Glare hits again. This time we don't break out a Glare. But we do outspeed the Dun Dun Sparse. And now what we have left is Star Raptor. Which will outspeed me if I'm paralyzed. But I don't know how much damage it can do to me. It uses Intimidate. It is going to go first. And there's a whole long cutscene. Everyone has to cheer on Larry. Yeah, go Larry. You're the best Larry. Oh my God. Please win this time. I don't have to watch this a million times like I did with Fue Coco. So finally, after literally like 30 seconds, he terastalizes, which again, takes forever. And with that, the Star Raptor goes for Facade. What? <laughs> Wait, no, do I knock it out? Yes! Okay, I want you guys to understand why that was so funny. That was not Magikarp toughing it out. Because if that had happened, rather than saying Magikarp let out a cry, it would say Magikarp toughed it out so you didn't feel sad. That literally did exactly 50 HP. No more, no less. And we knock out Staraptor. We don't not attack. Double negative there. And by beating Larry, we will be able to change our Terra type to normal. They give you 50 normal shards. The only shards they give you. The rest, you have to find from Terra raids, and that can take hours. I've already said this, but being able to boost our normal moves by an additional 50%, that might be the last piece of the puzzle we need to truly make the late game easy. Maybe? I don't know. I'm worried. I'm worried. I mean, something has to go wrong, right? Probably easier to battle the poison type team star boss, but I'm going to try battling Tulip. She leads with a Farigaraf, one of the coolest named Pokemon ever. And we're going to Terastalize right away. We are normal type, and it doesn't actually seem like Flail is doing that much more damage. So funny enough, other than Flail, which is based on your HP, so it doesn't get modified, do you know that all moves of your Terra type apparently do at least 60 base power? If that also applied to Flail, that would be amazing, but it apparently doesn't because there's no way that's doing 60 base power. Now, I should be talking about the battle, but realistically, we're taking damage. Well, that Zen Headbutt missed, so we're not taking damage, but we're trying to take damage from Farigaraf and knock it out, trying to get at as low HP as possible in order to one-shot the rest of Tulip's Pokemon. So we don't one-shot Gardevoir, and Psychic toughs it out. Okay, we win, right? We, we win. We're at 1 HP. We've used every Flail. It's base 400 power. Espathra, let's go. Come on. Oh, no. No, I didn't realize it had quick attack. All right, that's going to make things a little more challenging. Okay, something did go wrong. Didn't know it had quick attack. That's not the end of the world. We just need a little bit more HP. Probably if we had 150 base power, it'd be fine. Okay, okay. 
Now, remember, Ferrigraph missed an attack. So, hopefully this time it just attacks a heck of a lot more. Because if we're in a slightly better flail range, then we probably will one-shot the Gardevoir. So, this time, Ferrigraph uses not one, not two, but three Zen Headbutts. So, we're at four HP, which will allow us to knock out the Gardevoir. But... The Espathra will just go for quick attack. So I think we need to level up so that we don't have just 4 HP, but something like 20 HP, still knock out Gardevoir, and can tank Espathra's quick attack. Oh, but before you think I just gave up that quickly, I do battle a few times before I give up. With 35 HP, we didn't do enough to Espathra to knock it out. So being able to take 3 Zen Headbutts and be at the perfect range for Espathra and Gardevoir that seems to be the play. So I came back at level 73, hoping that exactly what we talked about would happen. Unfortunately, it didn't. We came really close. We got Magikarp to 9 HP, and so that is enough to knock out Gardevoir with ease. Unfortunately, the Espathra's quick attack, there was a chance we could tank it on 1 HP, but there's really no need. We're gonna have to level up anyway for the end of the game. Unfortunately, since we don't have six gym badges, the four-star terror raids aren't open to us yet, which makes leveling up a little more tedious than I'd like. But once we defeat Tulip, that won't be a problem anymore, and we'll start leveling up much faster, even though we're at a higher level. And with that said, I did want to try just one more time, because it would be so nice to have those four-star raids open. And of course, every time Giraffe Rig uses Zen Headbutt, the range of damage it does, it's going to be a little different each time. And this time, we don't have 9 HP, but 19 HP. And that might be perfect. If we can one-shot Gardevoir, which we do, we could maybe sweep. Espathra does not go for quick attack. We knock it out. And now all that's left is Florges, which... Although it has very good special defense, its defense isn't that great. And we knock it out. That is six gym badges. That is the vast majority of the game defeated. That is me beating the game with just a Magikarp. Wait, we're not done yet. It has always been a dream of mine to beat one of these games with a Magikarp using my standard rule set. Set mode, no items in battle, just the Magikarp, etc. We're as close as I've ever been, but there are still some very difficult trainers left. The Elite Four, the Champion, the final battles. It's going to be a long run. Now that we have six gym badges, we can buy bottle caps. What do these do? If your Pokemon is at level 50 or higher in Montenegro City, this guy with the Obama Snow, he will use those bottle caps to make your IVs perfect. These IVs can be between 0 and 31. And you can see the difference between my attack at 85 and now at 94. My defense is 96 before, now 111, etc. The only stat I don't bother with is special attack because we're not using it. And that is just another massive boost it's why it doesn't matter what magikarp you get because once you get six gym badges you can make all their ivs perfect you can buy mints although i did get an adamant's nature magikarp which was extremely lucky it's not a very high chance of that but you can buy mints and make it any nature you want unlike in earlier games you can make magikarp pretty much a theoretically perfect magikarp so if this magikarp can't beat the game no Magikarp can. Well, one thing Magikarp is probably going to be able to do pretty well is to defeat Atticus, the Poison-type Team Star member. I mean, he leads with Skunk Tank. We can Terrastalize. And I think Flail's just going to decimate his team. I mean, Venishock isn't great. But at the end of the day, we are so overleveled. Carpidium does get poisoned, which is not good. But by the time we knock out Skunk Tank... We've already cured ourselves, and this is why friendship is so good. We can then use Flail on Muck. Muck is definitely trying to poison us, and we actually almost knocked it out. 
We have a Rev of Room next, which is a little scary. It's steel, so it does resist. However, because it did damage to us, our next flail does even more. And now we have the car. It's only level 32. Our first flail does almost its entire HP. And although I guess in a way it was kind of close, in another more accurate way, it really wasn't in doubt. We were pretty over leveled for this battle. Don't forget, being at low HP is exactly what Magikarp wants to do. And that is three of five Team Star members. What's next? Why not battle Ortega, the fairy type Team Star boss? Well, there's a problem right away. If we don't knock out Azumarill quickly, it seems to want to use Charm. So we can't do what we normally do and just use Flail a lot. In fact, we've gone from sweeping a team to not even getting past the very first Pokemon. However, there is a way in which this would be much easier. You see, as I discovered, while the Team Star bosses do heal you the first time you go to battle them, they don't heal you every time. Once you go to rebattle them, you could be at less HP. And if we could figure the perfect amount to both knock out Azumarill and have the perfect flail for the rest of the team, we should be set. With that said, I do think we should probably come back a little bit later, but we'll keep that in mind for when we do. We still have to battle a couple Titan Pokemon, including Iron Treads. Unfortunately, as the name suggests, Iron Treads is a Steel Pokemon, but it actually has really bad attacks for me. And so we should be able to build up a heck of a lot of flails and eventually knock it out. Now, if I didn't Terastalize, Iron Head would do a lot less. But while we do get pretty low on HP, we actually are able to get past the first phase of the fight. And thankfully, this is another one of the Titans where I have the option whether I want to heal or just stay at 22 HP. I elect to stay at 22 HP. There's a 1 in 2 chance Iron Treads doesn't even attack me. Of course, there's a chance even if it knocks me out that I might survive on 1 HP. And there's a chance it goes for Rapid Spin, which does like nothing. So we're obviously going to Terastalize, but I do way less damage than I was hoping. Thankfully, Scovillain is much better versus the Iron Treads than me, and it also burns it. And gets a flinch. That's crazy luck via Fire Fang. That is, I don't know what the chances are. So between Fire Fang and Flail, we're doing a ton of damage. But despite all that, Iron Treads is actually able to knock out Magikarp. However, because it is burned, it too gets knocked out. And as we learn, even though our Magikarp is fainted, this still counts as a victory. And that is four Titans down, just one left, just two gyms left, and just two Team Star members left. We are getting really close. All right, I'm going to go try battle Grusha. Grusha is an ice type gym leader, so it might make sense not to terastalize immediately. That said, I do want to see what it would look like if I do terastalize right away. So... I go for Flail, and Frostmoth goes for Tailwind, which actually doesn't matter because we're so overleveled, we still outspeed Frostmoth. Then, we get a lucky miss due to Friendship, and so by the time the Frostmoth act oh, it doesn't hit us, sorry, I thought it would. We actually knock out Frostmoth at full HP, which is kind of good because I was very worried about Bug Buzz. Now comes out Bear Tick. Bear Tick can use Icicle Crash against us because we are normal type now. And it does decent damage, but less than I'd like. We then get another miss because this Magikarp just loves us so darn much. But we don't knock out the Bear Tick. We do on the next turn, and that will get us to the Satitan. Hopefully this doesn't knock us out because it might put us in range to one-shot Altaria. It goes for Ice Spinner, come on! 31 HP could do it. Flail knocks out the Titan, and now it all comes down to Ice-type Altaria. A one way to counter its giant weakness to Ice. We go for Flail, and it 
doesn't fail. Altaria is no more. One gym, one Titan, two Team Star. That is it. Oh, wow. Which one is the easiest though? Because none of them seem all that easy. Let's try Don Dozo. So at first I try to not Terastalize, but then Don Dozo starts doing a bunch of damage to me and I realize maybe I want the extra damage from Flail. This actually might be very tough. Even at level 86, we get a clutch miss. And all right, 63 might be good. We come really close to knocking it out, like probably within maybe 20 HP or so, but we would have won anyway. And we do get to heal before not just one, but the next two phases of the battle. Don Dozo has a three phase battle. You first have to fight Don Dozo again, then you have to fight Tatsugiri. We do heal, and even though sometimes the game won't let you terastalize again until you heal at a Pokemon Center, in this battle, they will. I don't know why that is. Now, because Don Dozo switches attacking me and Greedent, I actually get a lot of damage, although I wouldn't want Greedent to knock itself out. And it does just that, which is unfortunate because Arvin does not send out another Pokemon, even though he has. However, because Greedent has been taking all the damage, we are able to knock out Don Dozo at 80 HP. Next comes out the Tatsugiri, and at this time, both our Pokemon are fully healed, so we kind of have to start all over again, which is fine. Tatsugiri is a little scary, I guess, but Greedent used Tail Whip and Takedown. I kept going for Flail, and eventually, while it took a little while, we were able to knock out the final Titan. So, we can battle Arvin, and at least one storyline can be completed with just a Magikarp, assuming we win. Don't know about Team Star, don't know about the gyms, but the fact we can complete a storyline with Magikarp, again, assuming we beat Arvin, but I can't see any reason we shouldn't, that's a reason to celebrate. Speaking of celebrating, let's give ourselves more reason to celebrate by destroying Ortega's team. How? Well, here's the thing. In this game, it's actually really easy to get to 1 HP. If you lose an auto battle twice against a much more powerful Pokemon, then your Pokemon will just be at 1 HP. Now at level 86, with an adamant nature, full investment in attack, if my calculations are right, we should one-shot every single one of Ortega's Pokemon. So far, so good. We've knocked out Azumarill. Next is Wigglytuff, which is also scary because it has Cute Charm, which can just immobilize me. But that only lasts as long as Wigglytuff does. And that's just one turn. Dash Bun, not very strong. Finally, we have the car. But unfortunately, I don't know what the car's base stats are or its IVs or anything. So we just have to hope we one-shot. We don't, although we would with a crit. And now we got a tank and attack. We don't. It's disappointing, but if we could figure out the perfect amount of HP to knock out the Pokemon in one hit, and then maybe tank one attack from the Rev of Room, we should be fine. Wouldn't you know, with trial and error, I figure it out. It's 51 HP at level 94. This means we should, oh. Well, we should have been able to take a play rough, and that would have put us at the perfect amount for the Rev of Room, so I thought. But now we need to hope we one-shot Wigglytuff. See, that's when lucky stuff happens. You never know. Oh, it one-shots. Okay, that's pretty cool. And that means we're going to one-shot the Dash Bun. Or not. I didn't expect that. However, it did put me at maximum flail. Base 400 power. Is that enough to knock out the car? It wasn't last time. Is it this time? Oh, yes, it is. After all that, it turns out having 1 HP was what I needed for the car. I just need to level up a little bit more. We're almost at level 100, and there's just two trainers left to go. Airy, the Fighting-type Team Star member, and Rhyme, the Ghost-type Gym Leader. Now, considering we use normal moves, that might be a little difficult, but let's save that till the end at level 100. Let's battle Airy. I mean, Fighting-type, that's not too big a deal. We're not going to want it to Rastalize, 
but I can't really see what the issue is going to be here. Aerie leads off with Toxicroak, and like we talked about, Terastalizing would be a mistake, because then close combat would be super effective. So we're just going to go for Flail a bunch of times, Toxicroak goes for Poison Jab, and of course it gets a crit and it poisons us, but we're able to knock it out with about 90 HP to spare. Next comes out Passimian. I don't do that much with my first attack, but Passimian's close combat puts me at 150 base power for Flail, enough to knock it out, and hopefully the rest of Aerie's team. Next comes out Annihilate, the Primate Evolution. I'm just gonna... What? Wait, wait, what? Annihilate's Ghost? Poke... Oh. What? Uh-oh. Um, okay, let's worry about this a little later. That's really, 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 really bad. I did not realize Annihilate was part ghost type. So let's, before we deal with Annihilate, deal with the ghost type gym leader, Rhyme. And if you're wondering how we're going to get by with normal moves against a ghost, I have some ideas. For now, let's do some other stuff, and we'll circle back here later. Now, before each gym, there's a gym challenge. Some of these are just rolling an olive in a basket, but this one is doing a bunch of battles. Since these trainers all use ghost Pokemon, what I did is use up all my power points, and that way, the only move I can use is Struggle. Struggle is 50 base power, more than enough to knock out Shuppet, and you might notice that these battles are double battles. That's mandatory, I cannot just use one Pokemon, but I can use a second Magikarp I caught. It was in a Terror Raid, it's not very good, and it gets knocked out, but that's okay. Its purpose was just to allow me to do the battle. We now can knock out the Greaverd. We also get these really cool stat boosts. This is gonna be pretty easy. So after we defeat the first trainer, they then tell us there are two more. So let's battle this second trainer, Lanny. Haunter and Mischievous shouldn't be too big a... Oh, wait. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Oh, that's not good. That, that, that's, that's... Okay. Um, it heals you between battles, apparently. Uh, that... Okay, well, here's the thing. We can Terastalize to normal type, and if they just have ghost moves they won't be able to hit us so we can use up all our flails and then you struggle and win it'll be tedious and annoying but it shouldn't be a big deal so haunter knocks out magikarp bad magikarp mischievous can't hit me i can't run away from this so i just have to slowly use up all the oh no uh that's not ideal pain split is not quite what i want to see but that's okay you know what the HP should stay the same from here. Oh. Guys? There's a problem. There, There's a problem. Like a big problem. Curse takes away a quarter of my HP every single turn. Unlike what are called non-volatile status ailments like sleep and paralysis, we cannot just get rid of the curse unless we switch out, which we can't do. And so, oh, and Haunter does have Sucker Punch. That's not great. Mischievous is Payback, and we we lost. Um, okay, that might not be the biggest deal. With Tulip, we were able to defeat the first trainer, and then the trainer stayed defeated. You have to defeat two trainers for Tulip. So maybe if I use up all my power points again, the first trainer will stay defeated, and it might be tedious, but we can just defeat the trainers one at a time. Let's hope, because... Oh, no. No, you have to defeat them in a row. Guys, I don't think this is possible. Like, legitimately, I think this is actually impossible. So, we can just skip ahead, and let's talk about the issue we're gonna have. We need to use Flail for 15 turns. First things first, we need to not faint. And that's just not gonna happen, I don't think. There are two options. If we don't Terastalize... The Mischievous and Haunter with Nightshade can knock us out well before the 15 turns. So we have to Terastalize, but then we have a problem. 
Haunter will not go for its ghost moves against a normal Pokemon. The AI seems too good for that. That means it has a 50-50 chance of going for Sucker Punch or Curse. And Sucker Punch only has 5 power points. So there isn't even a possibility if we Terastalize that it won't go for Curse. And if we don't Terastalize, the issue is that it's just going to deal damage with Nightshade, Sucker Punch, all its moves, and so will Mischievous. And then it has Pain Split, which can take away a ton of my HP right off the top. But it's worse than that, because we don't just need a little HP, we need one more than half. Why? Because Struggle in this game sucks. Actually, Struggle post-Generation 3 sucks. You see, in Generation 1, Struggle was a normal type move. And because of that, we weren't able to damage ghosts. Starting in Generation 2, it was a typeless move, but starting in Generation 4, there was a massive catch. You see, in Gen 1 through 3, Struggle did recoil damage. In Generation 1, it was half the damage you dealt. In Generation 2 and 3, it was a quarter of the damage you dealt. Which is why you saw a Ditto challenge in Generation 3. In Generation 4, they decided that using Struggle was really bad, and they want to punish the player if they had to use Struggle. So a quarter of your maximum HP is deducted every time you use it as recoil. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And that's an issue because we need at least, assuming it's a one-shot, which I don't know if it is, two attacks to knock out both Pokemon. I tried running a whole bunch of numbers, asking people, they all told me the same thing. It's not gonna happen. It can't happen. You're not gonna win this battle. And they told me something else. Even if you did, what do you think's gonna happen versus Rhyme? You see, I thought I would go in with no power points and just start using Struggle. I would use Leftovers, hope for some critical hits. It would be fine, right? But no. We heal before gym battles. And so, I asked if Rhyme would be possible. We tried all sorts of calculations using Steel Terra type, Rocky Helmet, whatever we could do. None of it worked. It was impossible to defeat this trainer and even more impossible to defeat Rhyme. Even with Rocky Helmet, if we survived on one HP every single turn, we would still not defeat Toxtricity because Toxtricity, her final Pokemon, it only knows special attacks. Our run ends at a random trainer and even if it didn't, it would end just a little bit later. I'm devastated. I really thought this was possible. I didn't even consider the fact we heal before gym battle. I didn't know that was a thing. And I didn't consider how that would just end this. It's awful. It, it's over. Right? Well, there's more video left. And whether or not it's truly over is up to you. What do I mean by that? Well, there was a strategy that could potentially work. One that is technically within my rule set, but might violate the spirit of my rules. It all comes down to the fact this is a forced double battle. We need to use another Pokemon. And what is that other Pokemon supposed to do? Well, when I battled Tate and Liza, the only other forced double battle, we just let it absorb an attack and then faint. So it does nothing. But that's not true. It doesn't actually do nothing. It absorbs an attack. It's essentially serving as a support, absorbing one attack. It's not doing much, but it's doing something. So what if our second Pokemon did something a little more than just absorb an attack? Enter Sylveon. Catching this thing was nothing short of a miracle. It was like a 1 in 400 chance to find an Eevee in a Terra Raid with three stars or higher. Because it couldn't be any Eevee in the overworld. No, no, no. We specifically need an Eevee with its hidden ability, and the only way to do that before the post game is that sometimes they have hidden abilities in their raid battles. But trying to find a specific Pokemon with its hidden ability, the fact I found this, I wish I recorded that live, I was going berserk. Because if we have Eevee, we can use Skill Swap. And if we have Skill Swap on a Sylveon, we can attack because Sylveon's hidden ability is Pixelate. Technically, Sylveon isn't attacking the opponents, which is explicitly against the rules. It's using a status move 
that just so happens to be affecting Magikarp. In fact, there is precedent for this. In some of the battles you may have seen, I actually intentionally attack my second Pokemon so I don't have to split experience points. So the precedent that the second Pokemon can interact with the first, it's there. But is this a bridge too far? Is this still a Magikarp solo run? That's up to you to decide. If you say no, that's okay. I felt quite like the great Natalie Imbruglia. I was torn. No, seriously, I, I didn't know. Is this against the rules? It felt like it kind of was, because Sylveon is making a material difference. But I asked other people in the community and they said no. So I don't know. But just in case the answer is yes, this is okay, beating Rhyme is pretty trivial. We terastalize to the normal type, and then we can just use Tackle, we have Leftovers, and if things get bad enough, we can use Flail. Now, I hate to say it, but even if we didn't heal before the battle, even if we started with Struggle, Rhyme might have been impossible. Because even if we got a one-shot, we got a critical hit, our attack was high enough, even then, Mimikyu requires two hits because Mimikyu's disguise. And I believe if we get knocked out due to recoil while the other Pokemon gets knocked out, just like with self-destruct, it counts as a loss. However, thanks to some of the best luck I've gotten in a very long time, we were able to use Skill Swap Sylveon in order to knock out all of Rhyme's Pokemon. And that is all eight gyms. So we've beaten all eight gyms, We've beaten the five Titans, and we're going to leave Aerie for a little bit later. So now we have to finish those storylines. Let's finish the Titan storyline first, because all we need to do is battle Arvin. Now, Arvin proved to be really, really difficult. And why was he so difficult? Well, that's because the second Pokemon he sent out is Garganical. Garganical isn't just a rock type. But it's a rock type with body press, which, yeah, <laughs> it just destroys Magikarp. Now, I'm not exaggerating in that this battle took me literal hours to figure out a strategy. Not just gameplay, but thinking of the perfect strategy. And wouldn't you know, of course, Arvin has to heal you before the battle. So what I decided to do was to not terastalize my Magikarp in order to knock out the Greedent, and I would want to be at low HP, Toadscrewl would come out next, which is fast but not fast enough, and it's Grass type, which is why it came out next. Scovillain is Grass Fire type, it would come out after, and now we would have a pretty powered up Flail to knock out Garganical, so I hoped. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. We don't one-shot Garganical even with a critical hit. And Stone Edge, while it can miss, and that's what we hope it uses, we would probably need to survive on 1 HP with either Stone Edge or Body Press. And that can take a really long time. I battled Arvin on and off for like two hours. And usually I tell you that the strategy changed and I figured out a better way to beat him, but I didn't. I reinvested my EVs Still have max in attack, but now max in HP. And that gives me more opportunity to get a max powered flail. So that's kind of cool. Unfortunately, in this battle, we actually encounter a little bit of a problem. We knock out the Greedent too early. And I know Toad is going to use Power Whip. So I have to Terastalize into Normal type, meaning Garganical is going to come out next, which I don't really want, but might actually work in my favor. Nah, I don't think I survive a body press, but maybe I do. Doubtful. So I went for flail, it does like nothing. And that's not good. That's not what I want at all. The first body press misses. I go for another flail. Again, this is not at all what I want to have happen. I want the last battle and then survive at... We survive at 4 HP. Wait, what? Okay, so... If we just deal enough damage, we would... <laughs> Let's go! Perfectly executed! Exactly what I was planning! I knew I would survive! And I planned that accordingly. We already know we knock out these Scovillain. That's not an issue. Cloyster 
Hopefully it doesn't have Ice Shard. This should be a max powered flail. And oh boy, it knocks out Cloyster. Now, Mabostiv does have Intimidate. And it's going to Terrastalize as well, but into the Dark type. Thank God. If it Terrastalize into Ghost type, I think I would cry. But all I'm going to cry is Tears of Joy. Because without any controversy or dispute, at the very least, Magikarp completed a storyline in Scarlet and Violet. The Titan storyline, in fact, it would probably be easier in Scarlet version. But it didn't matter. We won. Hooray. But since we did defeat Rhyme, albeit with some controversy, we can challenge the Elite Four. Poppy, the second Elite Four member, she has Steel-type Pokemon. I actually think the other three members will be okay, but it's Poppy I'm really scared of. And then, of course, there's Gita, the champion, and then Nimona, who, despite the fact she's supposed to be weaker than Gita, has stronger Pokemon, and you battle her after. I don't really get it. Anyway, there are no ghost Pokemon in the Elite Four. That's good. But will they still end my run? Only one way to find out. The first Elite Four member is Rika, who leads with the Whiskash. Rika has Ground-type Pokemon. Not too big a deal. The plan is just to go for Flail and hope that the Whiskash's Earth Power takes me into max Flail range. It doesn't. At 36 HP, it's only base 100 power, which isn't great. And now we're going to Terrastalize. The reason I didn't do it right away, the Water Attack, Muddy Water, while it does have a chance to miss, it can lower my accuracy, and I really don't want to deal with that. So we do knock out Whiskash with Flail, but again, it's just base 100 power. Next comes out Camera. Its defense isn't as good as you would think. It looks so bulky. And we knock it out in one hit. But here's where the problem lies. Dawn Fan, like Pseudo Wudo all the way back at the beginning of the run, it has Sturdy. So there's no way I can one-shot it. Essentially, I need one of two things to happen. Either to somehow survive this Earthquake, or, well, I didn't survive the Earthquake, but the or is to have the perfect amount of HP to take an Earthquake, knock out Dawn Fan, and hope a max-powered Flail knocks out the rest of them. Well, my second attempt goes much like my first attempt did. Use Flail a few times, allow Earth Power to take me into very low HP, and then Terrastalize and knock out the Whiskash. Next comes out Camera Up. We already know that's a 1 KO. And I think we just need to reset until we get the 1 in 20... Oh, there we go. The 1 in 20 chance that we survive the Earthquake on 1 HP. Because unless Dugtrio has Sucker Punch, which it evidently doesn't, we will easily knock it out in one hit. And then the only Pokemon left is Clodzire. It is pretty bulky, but this is going to be a same type 400 base power move. Even when used by a Magikarp, that's enough to one-shot Clodzire. And that is one down. I wasn't too worried about Rika. And a first try victory would have been nicer, but hey, second try victory, Elite Four, pretty good. Now, one thing that's really cool is, unlike in any other point of the game, they don't heal you between Elite Four battles. Now, if we weren't fighting a Steel-type Elite Four member, this would be unbelievably helpful. We might even sweep through the entire team. Unfortunately, even if we Terrastalize, I doubt a 200 base power normal attack will one-shot. Wow! What? Okay, crit. But, like, okay... All right, I was not expecting that. Now we have a 240 base power attack, right? Because 20%, 40 base power. Does it knock out Corviknight? It doesn't. I'm not surprised. Now we might be able to survive the body press. We don't. If we did, maybe we could sweep through. But I don't know. I think we probably want to be at full HP. Build up our flail versus Copperaja and then hope a 400 base power flail will be enough, maybe with a miss or a survive on 1 HP. We might need friendship here. Thankfully, although the resets take a long time, we're in the same room, so we can try again and again and again and figure out exactly how things are going to work. As it turns out, the way it's going to work is poorly. You see, Copperaja not only has really good defense, but it has play rough and sheer force. Now, I can't Terrastalize, 
because A, play rough can miss, but B, the other move it has is heavy slam, which will be 120 base power. And yeah, that's way, way worse. So we've got to stay as a water type for as long as we can until we have to knock out the Copper Raja, since it won't predict we're going to Terrastalize and thus we'll keep using play rough. But the question is, is a base 300 power flail because we're at 150 base power with 21 HP? Is that enough to knock out Corviknight? No, it's not. In order to knock out Corviknight, and I don't know about the rest of them, we need to have 10 HP or less, which isn't that bad, but it might be hard to do. I've battled Poppy eight times, and while I've made it past Copper Raja a few times, I actually have yet to make it past the Corviknight. You see, Copper Raja, it's pretty good. And although in some battles misses are good, sometimes these misses are really, really bad. Because we have 59 HP remaining, and that's not nearly enough, and if we didn't get the crit, we would have knocked out Copper Raja. 59's not enough to knock out Corviknight, not nearly. And it's also, oh, did we just get another crit? Yeah. It's also not enough, oh. Well, I was going to say it's not enough to tank a body press, but that miss was good. So at the very least, we've made it past Corviknight for the very first time, and now we have to deal with Bronzong. Bronzong is unbelievably bulky, and we do decent damage. Hopefully that wasn't a crit. It wasn't. Maybe we survived this. On one more HP than max. 11. If it was 10, we'd be at max powered flail. This game, well, I can't be mad. We got that miss. And we do knock out Bronzong. Wait, does Magnezone have Sturdy? No, 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 no. After all this, surely there isn't another... No. Wait, it just... No, I just looked it as Sturdy. No! <laughs> Why, game? Why? By the way, just like with Star Raptor, Sturdy didn't activate there. I just didn't do enough damage, but yeah, that's going to be bad. I've been battling Poppy for 45 minutes, and I still haven't made it past the Magna Zone. I mean, the Kappa Raja part is just so inconsistent. I never know how much... Wow. I mean, there you go. There's a crit. We can't knock out Kappa Raja. We just have to hope we survive on one... Oh, Okay. So that's kind of good. We're going to have a max powered flail and that will actually one shot every single Pokemon. Now it's just like a 27% chance because there's the chance that we survive on one HP and then the chance Magnezone misses. It's not 30%. You know, just add them. It's complicated anyway. I had a math guy explain to me why it's about 27%. First of all, though, we do knock out Corviknight, right? Like I'm like 100% sure. Okay. I said 100%, but I was actually, like, not sure. So that was not true. But we did. So I was right. Well, I wasn't right because I wasn't sure. Anyway, we now have to face Bronzong, which I also don't know if we one-shot. We do one-shot. Okay, okay. Now we have the Magnezone. Just a 1 in 4 chance. That's all we need. All right. There we go. The 10% chance that it misses and do we knock out the final pokemon tinkaton i have not seen this pokemon yet it's going to terastalize into pure steel do we one shot yes yes we do and not only do i think we beat poppy i think we've just made it to gita i think we just made it to the champion because we're at 1 HP, we can Terastalize to normal right away, and I just looked, none of these Pokemon have priority moves. Let's see. Next up is our good old pal Larry, not the normal type trainer anymore. He now has flying Pokemon, which helps because his ace is a normal flying Pokemon. So, is Flail gonna one-shot Tropius? I don't know, we got a crit. <laughs> Let's hope so. Uh, next is Star Raptor, and oh, I guess it's not his ace anymore. And that's a bit of a problem because Intimidate right off the bat, not great. We do knock out Star Raptor. Altaria, we know, doesn't have great defense from Grusha's Altaria. And no crit, we knock it out. Oricorio, thank goodness it's not the ghost form. We knock it out, 
And the final Pokemon is a Flamigo, which is fighting type, despite the fact you would think it's part flying type. Although, can Flamingos fly? I don't know. Can we knock it out in one hit, though? We have minus one, but base 400 power is just too based for... F uh, that doesn't even make sense. Like, what? what is based? What does that have to do? That anyway, we won! Yay! All right. The final Elite Four member is Hassel. He is a Dragon-type trainer. Let's hope we one-shot his Pokemon. Hassel leads with Noivern. It's not all that bulky, and we're going to have to terastalize. This animation plays every single time. It gets very tedious. You can't turn off animations, but you can defeat Noivern. Dragalge has Poison Point, so there is a 30% chance the battle ends right here. We don't get Poison. I think we got this. Next, we have Flapple. It can learn Sucker Punch, I think. This one doesn't know it. Three down. Haxorus? More like send it back, Sirus. Okay, these puns are getting out of hand. And the final Pokemon is Backscalibur. And can we get a back-to-back -back Scalibur? Wow, I really need to stop, but don't worry. After we knock out the back Scalibur, yay, we did. Uh, Gita is going to be really tough. So, here's the thing with Gita. She has a King Gambit, which resists. A Glamora, which resists. And they're at a higher level. That's not good. That's not good at all. We also have the significant possibility that we're healed before her fight. And that means we can't do shenanigans like manipulate our HP to get the perfect amount. I hope that isn't the case, but we'll see. She leads with an Espathra, which didn't prove to be a very fun Pokemon to face the last time, and we are at full HP. Flail does nothing, and it goes for Reflect, which isn't great. The next turn, though, is when things really get bad. It goes for its signature move, Lumina Crash. This move not only is very powerful, but also lowers my special defense by two stages, meaning it's a two-hit KO. And that means we lose very quickly. I battled Gita around 10 times. Not once, not a single time did I knock out the Espathra. Now, we could have survived on one HP, but I needed to know something. I had saved outside of the Elite Four. What I wanted to know is if I lose and try to retake the challenge, where does it send me to? The answer? Right back to Gita. Now, is it like Team Star where it just heals you the first time and we can start at any HP we want from there on in? If that's true, I should have 15 HP. Oh, there it is. There it is. And with 15 HP, I terastalize right away, and oh, I kind of wanted to use Quick Attack. It should have gone for Quick Attack because it could have knocked me out. I thought that in earlier generations that's how it worked. The next Pokemon is Avalug. This is only base 120 power. And is that enough to knock out Avalug? Not even close. Avalug is extremely bulky. It uses Body Press, but our friendship keeps Magikarp in the battle. I don't feel sad, Magikarp. You just knocked out Avalug, two down. Next comes out King Gambit. So this should be, if my math is correct, a 280 base power attack. It's enough to knock out King Gambit. Oh, with a critical hit. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay, three down. It's going well. Next comes out the Go-Goat. We're gonna outspeed. Unsurprisingly, Flail, which now is doing 320 base power, is enough to knock it out. And Veluza, Mold Breaker, not much it can really do to me. It's a water Pokemon. Oh no. Oh no. It has Aqua Jet. Oh, that could be bad. That could be really bad because we're not a water type anymore. We're normal type. How am I going to do this? I decide to start with 121 HP. Why? 
because we use Flail, and that means Espathra goes for Lumina Crash. As long as it doesn't crit, we survive on 13 HP. Ideally, it would be 10 or less, but we can knock out Espathra, and that is now one extra Flail we used, meaning we would have done more damage to the Veluza, not that it really mattered. Go Goat is next. We need to Terastalize in order to knock it out. So we do just that. There's nothing Gogo -Go can do. However, as we saw before, it is incredibly unlikely we one-shot Avalug. We go for Flail, and unsurprisingly, it doesn't even come close. It goes for Body Press, and once again, we tank it on 1 HP due to Friendship. We knock out the Avalug, and in comes King Gambit. Now, King Gambit, I don't think is going to be a 1 KO regardless. It's close, but no. But it goes for Stone Edge. With 60% accuracy, it misses. And there are just two Pokemon left. Veluza, if we can somehow tank it, maybe we can one-shot Glamora, and this won't be so bad. No way. Okay, no way. No way. I, I can't believe it. We're going to beat the champion with Magic Carpet, no items. We're going to beat the champion with Magic Carpet, no items. We're going to beat the champion with Magic Carpet, no items. Okay, Lamora, it's Rock type. All right, come on. There's definitely a chance we can one shot. And even if we don't, maybe we survive on one HP. Maybe it misses. Flail. No, it's so close. It's so close. It's so close. Please miss. 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 Please. No, but maybe I survive. No. All right. So, but okay, that only took us like 10 attempts. Surely we're going to get right back. <laughs> I want you guys to understand the odds we're dealing with here. After that battle, I did some damage calculations and I figured out a few things about the battle. All of Gita's Pokemon have no EVs and 25 IVs in everything. The only exception is Glamora, which has 30 IVs in everything and 252 EVs in HP. Unlike Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, where they're actually EV trained and much more difficult. So remember I said this game was tough? I was wrong. It's not. None of them have held items. It's easy. Or so it appears. Because everything you just saw is incredibly inconsistent. In terms of the Espathra, if it knocks you into maximum flail range, it'll almost always go for quick attack. And that is bad, because if you don't survive on 1 HP, run dead. So that's great. The other thing Espathra can do is go for Reflect. Completely random when it decides to go that, but roughly 50% of my runs ended at Espathra. Gogo, no problems. Avalug, the only way you knock it out is if Gogo came out first, and now it's your fourth flail. It also needs to be a max-powered flail, and still... It is a 40% chance you knock it out in one hit. That's it. King Gambit, even if you had a max power 400 base power flail, wouldn't matter. Still cannot one shot without a crit. Veluza, you just need the 27% chance that it either misses or you tank. And Glamora, as it turns out, is a 33% chance to one a KO. Obviously, there's a chance we miss, a chance it crits, so it's about a 40% chance all in. But all in all, even when you make it to the Avalug, I calculated my odds at about 1 in 75. And although 75 doesn't seem too bad, these attempts take a very, very long time. And you could sometimes go 20, 30 attempts without ever making it past Avalug. It took me over an hour of attempts to make it back to the King Gambit. And the worst part is, you need luck at every step of the way. Kowtow Cleave, by the way, can't miss. So that's wonderful. I was so excited because, oh boy, we finally get to see a new Pokemon. It's over just like that. In order to win, we need a Spothra not to go for Reflect or get a critical hit. We need nothing for Go Go. Go Go is fine. We need Avalug to miss or not knock me out or I get a crit. We need the same set of circumstances for King Gambit. Veluza, we need only the miss or the survive on 1 HP. 
And then Glamora, we can potentially knock it out or any of the above. That is so much luck. It was enough that I was wondering if it was even worthwhile doing this for hours on end. And don't forget, I had to release a video every single day. Meanwhile, I would spend every free moment I had trying to get past this battle, trying to prove this was possible. You'd finally make it to King Gambit. And just like that, your hopes, they're gone. Getting that close so early and not being able to clutch it out, it's miserable. And every time you make it past Avalug, you hope that's gonna be the run. This is the run where it's all gonna happen. Then you get to King Gambit. And you know the run is likely gonna end. My last seven have ended here. But we get that clutch critical hit. One in 12 chance. But that's not enough. We need now a 20% chance or so that Veluza doesn't knock me out. This is the first time we've seen Veluza in over three hours. And just like that, it's over. Losing dozens of times to the same trainer. I mean, I really started to wonder if I should just give up. It would sometimes take 20 minutes between when I'd even see Avalug, let alone defeat it. Because sometimes I just got reflect five in a row and the resets aren't quick. There's a cutscene, animations are always on and terrestrialization animation is a pretty lengthy one. But sometimes you do get a little lucky. You make it back to where you're just so close. Only two things need to go your way. And that's it. Well, I mean, go, go, it's easy. Now two things need to go your way. And that's it. You can see it. And then it happens. Veluza doesn't knock me out. It gets a crit, but it didn't matter. And it all comes down to this. It's a 40% chance that this entire thing is over. These hours upon hours, not just battling Gita, but the 30 plus hours I've spent on this challenge while making a video a day. All I needed was to be able to release this video for you guys in order to prove that at the very least we could become champion with the Magikarp. Maybe we can't beat the game, but heck, I've never gotten this far before. All we need is for a coin flip essentially. Just one coin flip, but we don't get it. There's still a chance though. There's still a chance. It goes for Sludge Wave. And like that, who knows how long it will take. It's been seven hours since the last time I saw Glamora. How many more hours will it take until the next time? Every time I battle Gita, I'm hoping it'll be the battle that leads to victory. You might wonder why I don't stream these on Twitch, but it's just frustrating. We get knocked down to 9 HP in this battle. And that means the Espathra is going to go for Quick Attack most likely. It does. And we get the 1 in 10 chance it misses. That means we have a max powered flail. And because we didn't Terastalize, Gogo comes out next. We can Terastalize now since it doesn't really matter. Knock it out. And there is a slim chance we knock out Avalug. So many times I've been in the exact same position. So many times it doesn't happen. But it does here, albeit with a critical hit. That's cool, but it's not over yet. King Gambit has Supreme Overlord. I don't know what that even does, but it doesn't really matter because one hit and I lose. Although, if I get a critical hit, that can happen to King Gambit too. Every time this happens, I'm feeling a mixture of emotions. I'm so excited that potentially we could be done this battle, but I'm resigned to the fact it is incredibly likely Veluza knocks me out with Aqua Jet. It doesn't this time. 1 HP. There is a chance we one-shot Glamora. We're 0 for 2, but like I said, it's 40%. Right now, we haven't even gotten terrible luck with Glamora per se. We just never see it. But we're going to here. We have beaten Veluza. This is our third opportunity versus Glamora. Please, just knock it out. We don't get it. And that's all right. We'll just keep battling 
again and again and again and again. No way. No way! <laughs> we did it! We beat the champion, Magikarp. No items in battle. It took me 30 plus hours. But I can say with a brand new game, I have beaten it with Magikarp. Well, not the whole game. Still a couple things left to do. But I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I'm feeling good. After you defeat Gita, Nimona challenges you to a battle. And this battle does auto-heal you, which is unfortunate, but what can you do? The first Pokemon is Lycanroc, and Lycanroc is annoying. It's a rock Pokemon, but Stone Edge will miss a fair bit, so it's not too bad. Hopefully we can build up some flails, and then maybe sweep through the rest of her team. We get a crit, I Terastalize, and then I realize something. Lycanroc, like Espathra, has Acceleroc aka rock type quick attack i don't know if i have the mental energy to spend another five hours i'm not sure how long this is even going to take i have no idea let's try one more time we didn't even make it past the first pokemon but i'm getting a terrible sense of deja vu the one silver lining i can see about this battle is how much lichen rock is liable to miss with stone edge we go for flail Stone Edge misses. Pretty good. Next move, we go for Flail. Stone Edge misses again. Very good. We go for Flail. We're building up our power. Stone Edge misses again. We go for Flail. We get a critical hit even. Stone Edge, this time it hits. But that's okay. That's fine. We need it to hit. Now, we use Flail again. We're down to 74 HP. And I think it might be time to terastalize. Let's do it. Hopefully we knock out the Lycan Rock. Come on. Let's go. I don't know if we survive a Stone Edge. What? Uh, okay. Wasn't expecting Acceleroc. So this is now a base 100 power flail, which is now base 200 power because we've used it a bunch of times. I don't know if that's enough to knock out the rest of Nimona's Pokemon. Palmot comes out next. We go for Flail. One shot. That's good. Orthworm, though, is Steel-type. So our run's likely going to end here. And it sucks because we got really good luck. Yeah. We don't knock out Orthworm. And it goes for Body Press. No way. No way. I think we... One, we knock out Orthworm with a base 400 flail. I don't think that crit had anything to do with it. Next, we fight the dun 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 sparse. We go for flail and it is dun dun dun. Gudra, very good at special defense, not so great at defense. And then finally, the evolved form of the Pokemon I used in my first ever playthrough, Skeledurge. It's part ghost. Heart fire, but Nimona will always terastalize turn one. It is pure fire. It is slow, kind of bulky, but no match for Carpe Diem. Seize the run, Carpe Diem. You just beat Nimona and have completed two of three storylines. If there was only a way to deal with Annihilate, we could beat that storyline too. Move on to area zero and beat the game, no items, Magikarp. Aerie leads with Toxicroak, and I have an idea. If I can use the Rocky Helmet, I can do damage to Annihilate. All its moves are contact moves, so I just need enough HP for it to hit itself enough with Rocky Helmet, and then I win. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem to be possible. I mean, we knock out Passimian at just 45 HP. And that's not enough for Annihilate. I can use Splash in an important battle, but one close combat knocks me out. Annihilate's HP also isn't divisible by six, so it's gonna take seven hits. And then we have a Lucario and the car. 
I did have one idea I wanted to try. Something I thought might help. I spent over four hours going to raid dens of only the poison type. And I figured if I could change my Terra type to poison, which requires 50 shards, I could resist the Toxicroak's attacks, which appear first. I could then hopefully have just enough HP to make it past Annihilate and then try to sweep with Flail. It might require some luck, some surviving on one HP, but it was my only hope. I stall out all the sucker punches with Splash. I tried my very best to have as much HP as I possibly could for Passimian and then for Annihilate. But it wasn't Passimian that came out next. It was Lucario. You see, what Pokemon these trainers send out is determined by type effectiveness. Obviously, the AI determined Lucario with its neutral moves that deal special damage is a better matchup than Passimian, whose close combat and seed bomb attacks are resisted. Against Lucario, I just had nothing. I'm at full HP. Even though I tank one of the Dragon Pulses and hit with a max power flail without Terra Normal, without Metronome, it does nothing. Guys, I'm gonna tell you, I asked a lot of people. I looked into everything. Terra Fairy, redoing my EVs. And the only way I can truly show you how impossible this battle is, is to show you a test battle I did. This battle was not one I was going to count. I just wanted to prove to you there was no way this would be possible despite my best efforts. I used three X attacks, which in this generation maxes out your attack. I did that so I'd knock out the Pokemon as quick as possible while still allowing them to attack me a little bit because I wanted to see how much HP I would have for Annihilate. I would need to knock out Toxicroak and I'd need to knock out Lucario. And yes, with Terra Fairy, Lucario wouldn't be as big a deal, but other Pokemon like Passimian would, and so would the car, and frankly, so would Toxicroak. Although I wouldn't Terrastalize till after I knocked it out. We even get a clutch miss, but I think saying the best case scenario that after these two Pokemon, I have 120 HP, it's more than fair. And unfortunately, what would happen? We get knocked out. We have max defense, max HP, but we don't have enough HP for seven Rocky Helmets. And then the Simeon, the rest of the Pokemon, it's just not going to happen. It sucks. It really does. I didn't want to admit defeat, but we ran the numbers. And while winning is possible, it's like one in several million. So not as crazy as Weedle but not something that is realistic. So, unfortunately, our video ends on a bit of a sour note. We were able to become champion, but did we beat the game? No. No, we did not. There is hope, however. There is a game that I think can be beaten with Magikarp without items. I do plan on releasing that video. I've been working on that for several years by now, and I just haven't finished it because I get sidetracked. But, you want to see that video, let me know. Until then, thank you for watching this movie-length episode. And until then, I'll see y'all later. Take care.